Barry Bonds is regarded as one of the greatest hitters of all time, but hasn't been in a video game in almost 20 years. Even when he was hitting monstrous home runs and shattering hitting records, he wasn't represented in the most popular video games of all time. Why is that? In today's video, we will be exploring what happened with Bonds, what games he was represented in, and what games did to hide a Bonds-like player in the game. So let's first start with the games that Barry Bonds was in. We started looking back all the way back to around 2003 and of course we did some digging and went back to MLB 2K3 which did have Bonds although we were not able to get any gameplay of his swing. However we were able to find him in the next release simulated baseball games like Slugfest 2004 where he was an absolute menace. We were able to find him in All-Star Baseball 2004, Triple Play, and even Backyard Baseball 2003. It even included his in-game character talking about being the greatest of all time, Reggie Jackson being his cousin, and his godfather, Willie Mays. My godfather is Willie Mays. Me, huh? My dad played for the San Francisco Giants a long time ago, way back in the 70s. When the ice cream man comes to my neighborhood, my dog always goes nuts. I thought maybe he wanted some ice cream. But when I gave him some, he just sniffed it and walked away. That's about where we stopped seeing him in video games. It turns out that in 2003, Bonds announced that he would no longer be licensed by the MLB Players Association, a decision that he made on his own. The reason being is that he wanted to be the only one in control of his name and the intellectual properties associated with his name, stance, voice, etc. Which is not too surprising when you think about all the drama associated with Bonds, the press, and how he was perceived from the outside. So, was Bonds never featured in a video game after that? Well, yes and no. He technically was not included in any future video games, but there seemed to be a risky, albeit effective loophole where video game developers would include Bonds like replacements. But before we get into that, I would like to give a shout out to Ryan Ferguson, who really helped me with my research of these Bonds like replacements in games. I will leave a link to his blog that included a lot of the information that we'll be going over. So, what was the first time a Bonds-like player was introduced in a video game after his withdrawal from licensing? Funny enough, it was the very first year after that, there was a character named John Dowd in MVP Baseball 2004. This name may ring a bell to you because he was also featured in the Bigs and MVP 05. However, as the name suggests, the player looks absolutely nothing like Bonds except for the fact that he bats lefty and was in the three hole of the Giants lineup. John Dowd was a name that I had recognized, but the next few players I discovered I frankly had never even heard of before. The first one comes from the MLB 2K series. Joe Young was the Bonds-like replacement that played for the Giants in these games. He had the bat waggle, but was a right-handed hitter and did not look anything like Bonds. It's funny they chose to have him as a right-handed hitter in my opinion, because you'll see with all the other Bonds replacement players that everyone else was strictly a left-handed hitter. Moving on to a very obscure player that was only featured in one game, I'm talking about Wes Mailman that was featured in the All-Star Baseball 2005 game. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Bonds was featured in the All-Star Baseball 2004 game, so the announcement of withdrawal from Bonds must have been after the game was released. Anyway, Wes Mailman also looked nothing like Bonds physically, but did include his iconic elbow guard and bat waggle. This card was absolutely cracked when I played around with him, so good job All-Star Baseball. You know we love you on this channel. So those are the obscure guys that I mentioned that were featured in games, but obviously I've left out the most important of them all and the most iconic one, Reggie Stalker. Reggie Stalker was included in the MLB The Show video games with mention of him being in 06 07, 08, and MLB The Show 16. In MLB The Show 16, he was included in Diamond Dynasty as a collection reward, and if you don't know what that means, basically he was an endgame card for the popular Ultimate Team style game modes that were popping up around the time. And this card did not disappoint. He's regarded still as one of the best MLB The Show cards in history. However, after 16, Stalker was never featured in an MLB The Show video game. It's hard to know why. I imagine Bonds caught wind of it considering how popular the game was and shut it down. But ultimately, I don't know any information regarding this. I couldn't find any information regarding this. So it will be a mystery as to why we will never see this player again. But there you have it. It really is such a shame that we won't be able to use Barry in a more modern day video game. But I do hope that one day this will change. Most recently, MLB The Show included Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa into their game, which many people didn't think would happen at all due to their open steroid use. So this gives me hope that one day Bonds will be included as well. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. So with that being said, that will conclude the video. 
and I hope you all enjoyed and if you made it this far please make sure to leave a thumbs up if you like this video make sure to check out the Negro Leagues video that I did I think you guys will enjoy that one as well